Simone, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. <laughs> well, before we talk uh, about the new album, I'd like to go back to the beginning because I saw a, a blog post where, where you wrote about yourself as a young girl uh, 15 years ago before, uh, yeah, almost 15 years ago before this, this whole thing started. If you look back now, is being a musician, is it as you expected back then? Well, I, I do remember that when I was still in high school and I had the very first show with Epica that was in a 013 together with Anathema, mm. I had to write a report for my art uh, class about the, uh, the experience of doing okay. a show on your, uh, by yourself. And I wish I could somehow get that report back because it was on these really old computers, you mm. know, the, the really big machines back in my room at my parents and I really would like to read what I was writing back then mm. experiencing it for the first time I remember I was extremely nervous and I actually haven't told hadn't told my parents I had that okay. show I was playing with my choir I had a show with my choir I had to leave in the break in order to be on time for soundcheck for the sh first show with Epica back then still Sahara yeah. Dust I was standing on the stage like a sack of potatoes totally nervous didn't move much and it's like a day and night difference to how it is now yeah. and I was uh, now I'm I'm never nervous for a show but okay. back then I was so nervous and I was like oh I hope I don't have to experience this again <laughs> and I looked at the list of shows that was getting bigger and bigger and I thought oh <laughs> I better get used to this and now it's completely different I feel like a fish in the water okay. on the stage and yeah of course it's been a quite the evolution for me from the beginning till where we are now it's been almost 15 years, so. Did it take long before you got that confidence? Um, I don't know, it kind of evolved naturally. Mm -hmm. As you also have to see, I was still a teenager back then, mm -hmm. so you not only have to become confident on stage, but in life in general. Sure. You have to make the journey into becoming an adult. Traveling around the world made everything go faster, mm -hmm. surrounded by people that are not your age, of course, helped as well, but the guys keep you young. <laughs> they never grow up. <laughs> the boys, I mean. Fair enough. And, uh, well, you mentioned your parents, they, you didn't tell your parents that you had the show. Why, not, why didn't you tell them? Uh, I, I don't know. I was a little bit afraid of their reaction, maybe, playing in a band. But um, they, they came to the, to the show. I had to tell them that I had another show because I wouldn't be there for the whole concert mm -hmm. at the choir. But uh, my mom's very proud, my dad as well, but my mom loves to go to shows herself. She loves mm -hmm. musicals, okay. so she's, she's been a present supporter and my dad is behind the scenes proud. And okay. But of course, I think it with every parent, you are a little bit afraid of the future of your child. You want the best for your child. You mm -hmm. think education should come first. But I also very strongly believe in intuition and I kind of listened to that and mm -hmm. I had it feeling that it would be the right choice to do, to, you know, uh, spend all my time, mm -hmm. invest all my time in, in a band. Sure. And, well, you've become a mother yourself a couple of years ago. So how do you envision you saying to your children, do, do you want them to make music? I want them to do what makes them happy. So I can already tell my son has um, musical blood. He dances okay. to the beat, he changes his moves to the beat, so he has a feeling for it. And he also, our neighbor, she has a son that's now 18 and she brought us some toys of her son when he was little. And there's this little, uh, yeah, how do you call it, um, yeah, disc man thingy, mm. but with like tiny little chips with just one song on them, okay. back from the 90s. So the Backstreet Boys and mm. Sync and Spice Girls and... Uh, there's one song, it's called uh, Who Let the Dogs Out. Sure. And my son always plays that one and then we have to dance in the living room, it's hilarious. But it's, uh, it's fun and I try to also um, leave that option open, you know, mm -hmm. for him to explore music but not force it too much upon him as well. And, and one more thing about uh, your background, so to say, because I've, I've spoken to uh, other other female uh, singers for for hard rock bands, metal bands, and you just mentioned that that you kind of had to grow up 
uh, quite quickly, starting out. So what was it for you being one of the very few women around? Because it's still, it is a very male-dominated uh, scene. So. Um, well, I guess the only difference is that we come from different planets. <laughs> <laughs> but, and that we have different um, communication styles. With guys, I had to learn that it's almost very much black and white. You know, mm. guys are very straightforward. And with girls, there is a lot of gray areas in between. So I had to find out a way to communicate with guys without having it appear like cats and dogs communicate like opposites of each other. And, and especially um, early on, was it difficult to kind of uh, get the respect you, you felt you deserved? I think women in generally are often uh, seen by guys also because of the appearance, I guess. Mm. But um, I myself am I'm a fan of, uh, you know, boobies as well. So I don't care when, when they shout that or stuff. Okay. But I must say, I've never had a lot of experience with that, only on festivals where okay. people are drunk by mm. noon and they don't really know the bands that are going to play. They see a woman on stage and they get all, yeah, hormonal. Okay. <laughs> well, good, good that it it's, uh, doesn't happen anymore. Um, then, then obviously you have a new record out, uh, the, the Holographic Principle. Yeah, it's quite a mouthful. <laughs> quite a mouthful. But before we talk about that, I, I want to go back to the previous one because they are in a sense in the same line, the Quantum Enigma. So what was the mindset of the band after touring for the Quantum Enigma? Well, the Quantum Enigma has been received so well above mm -hmm. our expectations, uh, but we put so much blood, sweat and tears in that record that we were very grateful that it got the response mm -hmm. that it did. And we kind of switched things up, writing and recording process, worked with a new team to kind of reinvent ourselves. And it worked great. So we mm -hmm. wanted to kind of set in that same direction. And this time we uh, also allowed uh, ourselves to take money from the budget for mm -hmm. recording to have more Real in, uh, to have real instruments um, mm -hmm. recorded and not samples. So because Ooh. we are a very orchestral band, mm -hmm. and uh, in the past we've worked with strings, but we wanted to have a whole brass section, woodwinds, all the exotic instruments. A huge percussion recording took place. So we really went more into detail than ever before and took the time in between all the touring that we did to write and record this record. Why this? extra focus on, on detail and, and on live sounds and do you know where it uh, came from? Well, first of all, we are a very orchestral uh, mm. metal band or symphonic metal band, so it, the orchestra arrangements take a big place in our music. And we have worked with orchestras in the past and it's always a big organization. We've saved it for special occasions. And our producer, Joost van der Broek, has worked with uh, orchestras. He has a lot of experience with that. Mm -hmm. So we knew he would be the guy to help us conduct this huge production. He knew the right people for the job and we're very grateful that we, we did that because it makes a difference in the overall sound, mm -hmm. makes it more organic, more human, I guess. And then obviously the obvious uh, question after is, is how will you translate it to, to the live shows and will you take a big orchestra with you? I guess we will save that for the special occasions because the places where we tour, first of all, the stages are not big enough. Sure. It's a lot of organization, uh, travel-wise, budget-wise, and um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot of work basically. And mm -hmm. we decided to keep it for special occasions. Okay. And in terms of the songwriting, then were there songs or ideas left over from from uh, the Quantum? In, uh, sorry, the Quantum Enigma. That that kind of found their way into the, the creative process? I believe there's there's one song, as far as I know, that's Universal Death Squad, that okay. was originally also written for the Quantum Enigma. Okay. Didn't make it to the cut, but now it's included, and one of the best songs on the record, in my opinion. Why? It just, I listen to melodies and they, they grasp me or, or they, they don't. And I mm -hmm. guess the, the, the guys in the band, being composers themselves, they look at the overall picture, the structure of the song. But I am very much, uh, attracted to melodies, vocal lines. It has to, can be a guitar line, can be mm -hmm. vocals, can be or orchestra. But that song uh, appealed to most of the band members okay. and also the journalists that already listened to it mm -hmm. before um, we actually made up the final track list. 
when we had listening sessions in Germany and Holland, we were not yet sure how the city was going to be shaped, which songs would mm -hmm. be on there. And we also asked the journalists, which ones did you like? And the Universal Death Squad was one of the favorites already from the journalists back then. Do you remember the starting point of that track? Uh, I don't remember working on for the, the Quantum Enigma okay. myself because the guys themselves, um, of all the musicians, so I'm a singer, so I guess I would be <laughs> kind of excluded. I don't write songs, I write okay. the melodies for right. the vocals and the lyrics. But they have been working together on their songs mm -hmm. apart from me. I got to listen to the songs okay. when they're at a later stage of development.